Welcome back to The Gray Escape. This time, we talk wiring. Let's go. I just want to preface this video by saying that this is not a tutorial. If you're interested in a full-scale tutorial with ridiculous amounts of detail, check out Explorist.life's channel on YouTube. They really know what they're doing over there, and I officially don't recommend that anyone do their electrical system based off my video. So I hope you look at this as more of a progress update video and not a tutorial. But this is how I did my system, so let's get into it. The first thing I did was screw some 1x2s into the floor to keep the batteries from sliding around. I left a space over here to allow for the gas entry and another slot in the back where I can put in a wall later. Then I got to cutting some of these really large wires. First thing I tried to use was this pair of large garden shears. And not only did it take a million passes to get through, but it left a really rough edge and uh, frayed some of the wires. Um, I had to finish up with some hand shears here. This is not the way to do this, but I did not have the right tool at the time. So I was trying to make do with what I had. As a result of the fraying, I wound up having to actually uh, put the jacket back on the wire and smash it back into shape with a hammer so that it could fit into the wire lugs that I was using. Here I'm trying to figure out how to crimp the ends of this wire without having a crimper, another tool that I didn't have in my arsenal. I was trying to use a nail to create divots that would provide some grip so that the wires didn't slip out of the lugs. This next piece worked out a little bit better because I was actually using the end of the wire and didn't have to cut anything, so no frayed ends to worry about there. I fit the lug right on, smashed it down, and put some divots in it with the head of the nail, and this is an adequate result. To finish these off, I borrowed a heat gun from my dad to adhere the heat shrink to the ends of the wires. Then cleaned off my battery terminals with some alcohol and applied the wires to the batteries, creating a 600 amp hour battery bank. This bank consists of three 200 amp hour ampere time batteries wired in parallel. I attached some pieces of half inch plywood to these upright two by fours in order to create a place to mount my MultiPlus and other components for my system. I pre-drilled and attached the bracket for my MultiPlus, hung the MultiPlus, then started mounting additional components, starting with the Lynx distributor, shutoff switch, and main fuse. I just wanted to go over something real quick. Um, when you install the BMV 712, it comes with this small cord. This provides power to the BMV. I had ordered the version that comes with this cord. This is a temperature sensor. Since I purchased batteries that do not have an internal temperature sensor, um, I needed to add one. So this cord goes directly to the battery and um, splits off into two places. Now this red one is supposed to be plugged in over here and this black one is supposed to be plugged in here for the temperature. So the red one that's for the power, when I plug it in here, the BMV monitor does not come on. Apparently the issue is that this uh, power cord over here does not supply enough current or voltage, one of those, uh, to power the BMV. Uh, so what I've done is I've run the temperature sensor wire, which is the black one, to the spot where I want the temperature monitored. And then uh, I've used the other cord that provides enough current, connected it to power. And instead of connecting that also to the battery terminal, I've connected it up here. This way, if I turn this off, if I turn off my entire power system, it also will turn off the monitor. So it won't be drawing power. Uh, I am going to put some electrical tape or something on the end of this so that it doesn't you know, fly around and hit something and cause a problem. But just wanted to stop here and let you guys know that if you do upgrade to the temperature sensor that um, the power cord is not powerful enough to actually turn on the monitor. So you will have to use both this cord that com comes with the kit and this uh, black side of this cord for the temperature sensing capability. The next step in the process is to wire the chassis ground. It's connected here to the Lynx distributor. This needs to be attached to any metal that is connected to the ribs of the bus. Uh, so I used the old chair mounting rail because it is in fact welded to the ribs of the bus.
my multi-plus. The left three terminals will go to the shore power inlet. Um, that's what this white cord is doing here. It goes back through this wall and out through this hole that I just drilled. Um, but that is my shore power inlet. So now I just feed this wire up through here and attach the inlet to the side of the bus. This is where I'm at on my electrical system. I was waiting for the programming dongle or chip or whatever it is to come in um, to program this MultiPlus for use with these batteries. It's actually not very hard at all to program it once you have that little uh, device that hooks it up to your computer. So I went ahead and did that yesterday. Um, and then I went ahead and installed this MPPT charge controller. This takes the energy from the solar panels and converts it for use in the batteries. I have yet to hook up the actual solar panels to this because I needed to get some extenders for the wires that come out of the solar panels because they won't reach where I want them to reach. Um, but I did install this. I hooked it up to the Lynx distributor and underneath there you can see there's a cord that's going behind this wall. And you can't see it back here because it's tucked into that uh, metal channel. But it comes out over here. It's going to go up this wall, behind here, over this way. And it's just hanging there right now, but that's where it's going to go through the ceiling to connect to the solar panels. I also went ahead and bought a couple of these. Um, I actually did get the 2020 in, which is going to be for powering that and the fridge, which is going to go right here. Good morning, everybody. So this is where we're at right now. I've got almost everything hooked up. Just waiting on that one last uh, part to finish this system up and starting to run some wires today for the AC distribution panel. All right, folks, so I have a couple of runs wired, kind of. So they're not actually hooked up in the box yet. Um, but the first one goes back here, and these are the orange wires you're seeing. Up here, behind here, over this way, and up to here. This is going to be where our outlet for the roof deck is going to go and the outlet for the vent fan, which we're going to put in here. And then from there, it keeps going this way. And we're going to have an outlet up here for a projector, because this is going to be the head of our bed. Uh, going along this way and down, we're going to have an outlet in here for one side of the bed with USBs for phone charging. And then the second run, again, goes through this wall, goes down, comes over to here, where we're going to have a dinette outlet with the USBs for charging your phone. It's going to go back through here and come out down there all the way over and up. There's going to be an outdoor outlet down here. This outlet that's already wired is uh, the yellow cord, and that is going to be for the bridge. Uh, but this is going to go outdoors so that we have somewhere to plug in things when we're outside. And then it goes up here to this outlet, which is going to be for the other side of the bed. And then all the way over to here. I'm not really sure where this outlet's going to go, but it comes out in the kitchen. And we're going to have that outlet in the kitchen for if we need, need to use a blender or a coffee maker.
of shoving. This has been fit into a skein box and I've got two wires coming out the back there. Taped them back up with the insulation around them as much as I could put back in place. And that is our first outlet wired. All right, folks, so I'm in the middle of doing my DC wiring. I kind of got started because I wasn't sure exactly how it was gonna go, but um, I know you're seeing a sea of red wires over here and that is because I am cheap. So I bought all red wire uh, and I'm just putting black electrical tape on either end to signify which wire is which as I'm running them. Uh, I know this is not the best way to do this. I know that there could be problems if I need to work on the middle of a wire and I'm not sure whether it's the negative or the positive. There are ways to test that and I know it's making more work for myself if anything should ever happen, but I'm counting on nothing ever happening and doing this right the first time. Um, that being said, I need to double check my wiring on the back of this fuse box because I noticed on one of explorers.life videos that I was watching um, that when he started putting the uh, positives in at this end, he would put the corresponding negative all the way over here. So I gotta double check and make sure that that's not what I'm supposed to be doing before I actually hook items up to this. What I've done over here is made a contraption with some extra wire that I had from running the, uh, the AC wiring. Um, to hold this so that I can just pull this and uh, run it. It's actually been really helpful to have it all the way at the back of the bus because I know that if I walk all the way up to the front door with a piece of wire, that it's about 10 feet long. The wires that go in there come out here, come all the way over here to this front cabinet, which is out here. And the reason that is, is because we're gonna have a 12 volt pump in here we're going to have a uh, automatic flush valve to empty the uh, shower tank with the push of a button so that we don't have to go outside to uh, turn the valve to empty the shower tank. Um, what's this one? That's for the shower fan, light, and switch. So we're going to have the shower right here, and there's going to be a light up there, there's going to be a switch. We're gonna have a fan that we're gonna be able to put in that window there to help deal with the moisture. We're gonna have another fan down here that's actually going to be for uh, the toilet. And uh, that's what that little bit of wire down there is for. And those are all gonna be hooked to one switch. And also, of course, bundle hanging up here for a dinette light. Um, so that's how far I've gotten. And I still have some more work to do over on this side of the bus. But uh, just wanted to show you my progress. just walked into the bus and it's actually kind of chilly in here. Um, I've had this AC run in this morning just to see how it does throughout the day, um, how much battery it runs down and, and that type of thing. Uh, but it is actually relatively chilly in here. And now it's time for some wire management. I have a whole bunch of this uh, plastic conduit that will protect the wires from chafing, rubbing, or getting cut open by any sharp edges uh, throughout the bus when the bus is in motion. So uh, let's get this on. looking a lot better. All of the red wires on this side I have put in this black conduit and that goes up through the wall into the plumbing closet. This giant mess down here I was able to tuck in all the red wires and uh, one of those orange wires. Uh, this yellow wire did not fit. I can get it its own conduit later but uh, right now I'm really just worried about it being a trip hazard so it's okay the way it is for the moment. This side, I had a whole bunch of red wires there. 
and they are all now nicely put away in their conduit and they all come out here for various switches and things so i will add some more conduit when i go to put in the walls um, wherever it's necessary to protect the wires with the power system and wiring about 95 percent complete this is about as far as i can go with this project time to move on to something else thanks again for watching like it if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more we'll catch you next time on the gray escape